בוקר טוב לכולם. אני מאוד שמחה להיות פה, ותודה רבה על ההזדמנות להיות בכנס הזה ולתת הרצאה. אבל יש לי בעיה שאין לי מילים מספיק בעברית, ואני מעדיפה לדבר uh, באנגלית. אז מי רלצ'ר היא דיבורית to the recent uh, survey which we conducted on behalf of Kamat with uh, Haim Shkolnik um, uh, and uh, with the assistance of uh, the draftsman of Rashut Atikot, uh, Yaakov Shmidov. Uh, he had... He had applied uh, the remote uh, sensing and his uh, methods helped us assist it as much as much in uh, identifying of some of the buildings uh, and um, uh, we have um, discovered and rediscovered um, different edifices, uh, cavities and uh, facilities which are dated uh, for a very long uh, period of time starting from Iron Age, Hellenistic period, early Roman, early Byzantine but my uh, lecture today will be devoted to the um, uh, Russian phase, uh, let's say Uh, which, um, is the, which uh, started in the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, so the, <coughs> the place is known as Der Shar or Beit Zahar, uh, uh, and it's also known among Israelis as uh, Menzar Rusi. Uh, it's uh, located near modern Gush Etzion, uh, Efrat, and uh, it's uh, located at the equal distances between Jerusalem and Hebron approximately, near the ancient and modern road. It's, um, uh, it became very well known and famous in the beginning of the 20th century when um, Arab Afelach uh, found there the remains of the early Byzantine church. And uh, um, its unusual feature was, unusual trait was that uh, it contained uh, the Greek inscription which was mentioned in Zachariah and Ioannus and um, it was uh, somehow connected without a profound investigation to the locus sanctus um, uh, devoted to the birthplace of uh, John the Baptist. It's a long story, now this identification is not relevant anymore, but in the beginning of the 20th century it encouraged uh, several confessions, several churches, to start a competition um, uh, uh, to uh, buy this uh, place, and this competition was won by a Russian mission, Um, Leonid Sensov, who was the head of the Russian Ecclesiastical Mission at that time, he uh, purchased this uh, site and uh, started the activity there, there. I should also mention that uh, he was also the architect of all surface uh, buildings um, uh, and because b before the Tanger he was an architect. Um, and uh, uh, the main uh, moving power for the developing uh, of this place was Father Razer Sudamoykin, amazing person, and um, uh, we know very, you know, tips of the information about him, though he has a historical person um, known and even photographed in the beginning of the century. We know that he was a very successful merchant in Russia, in Altai, and somehow he moved, uh, he <coughs> arrived to the Holy Land and became in charge of this place in Dershar. Um, and uh, he converted this um, Byron Hill into the blooming site with uh, the gardens around it and full of uh, different uh, buildings and a, a welcoming home for the pilgrims, Russian pilgrims, on their way from Jerusalem to Hebron. Uh, this is the map which was drawn by hand um, by uh, uh, Benedictine uh, Father Gisler, uh, and um, it reflects uh, this, the first and actually the single map Uh, of this uh, place, and it reflects the knowledge about the archaeological remains of that spot, on that spot at that time. You can see that, do you see my arrow? No? You can, you can see that on the western slope there is a Roman road, and um, the area, the fenced area of Russian property is dotted, uh, and uh, at the top of the hill there is a Byzantine church. Um, And this is actually almost everything we knew before our survey archaeologically. We also uh, uh, knew some um, notes from the Russian uh, sources, historical sources of the beginning of the century, previous century. Uh, we knew that uh, Lazar Sudamoykin and uh, the other inhabitants of uh, the site, they have opened, cleared uh, plenty of uh, tombs. Uh, they have uh, built cisterns and also Um, they have organized a kind of a museum 
amateur museum uh, at the spot of the church. And this museum contained ancient shafts, uh, capitals, and other remains of the ecclesiastical uh, furniture of the church. Uh, also, we know this is uh, very important. We know that Lazar Sudamoykin, he built a whole underground system consisting of churches, corridors, and so on. And uh, before our survey, we even didn't know if it's really true, if uh, really these uh, old features existed or not, or it's only you know some myths uh, uh, which preserved in the historical sources. Um, and um, this is the result of our survey. We have uh, found uh, 25 features. Only some of them uh, were known before, and we have superimposed them on the aerial photo of the British Mandat period, and uh, it also helped us much in the identifying some of the features um, in coordination them to the historical sources. Uh, uh, so the uh, features are concentrated at the top of the hill, uh, at the eastern slope, but the main um, concentration is on the western slope, on two terraces, upper and lower. So first of all, we have found again the Roman road. Um, uh, uh, currently, it's preserved it, uh, 150 meters uh, um, length, the preserved length of it. And uh, in some places, there is uh, even a margin with uh, the slabs uh, st still in situ. And uh, this is the first feature which we found at the upper terrace. And it didn't impress us much in the beginning, but then it became something like a crucial uh, feature. It was the cave uh, with rectangular plain inference and a very uh, small rec rectangular room. And we noticed uh, that it has also a corridor with uh, the strange dead end, and it was blocked by the cement wall, uh, broken um, at a certain period of time. And also it had uh, the beginning of the staircase leading uh, down, um, downwards. And um, uh, all the meaning of uh, these uh, traits uh, will be clear um, in the uh, discussion uh, soon. This is uh, the staircase uh, which is uh, leading to this uh, uh, cave, to the Roman road, and it's uh, difficult to decide if it's modern of the 20th century or if it's ancient. Uh, this is the complex, the next complex, um, more representative, and it consists of three features. The central feature is um, a mono, mono, mon, monolith, um, freestanding monolith. Uh, it's uh, surrounded by the embolatory corridor, um, and it's flanked by two other features. To the left side, there is a cistern. You can still see here a mouth of the cistern, and it was converted into the room by Russian settlers and used as a, as a cell um, or for some any other purposes. Um, and in the middle, uh, the feature is mostly outstanding in this complex. It's a facade. You can see that uh, I can't go too deep here into the profound uh, analysis which we made, but we consider that the initial phase of this edifice is uh, uh, Hellenistic, and uh, we think it's a tomb. It resembles very much the tombs of the Kidron Valley. But in the 20th century, it was converted into the chapel by, uh, let's say, baptizing the facade. Um, the Russian monks, they um, carved and partially cemented uh, the cross. You can see here the vertical uh, arm and um, the horizontal arm. And they have also converted the acroterium on Nefesh into the small uh, arm uh, of the cross. And for every Orthodox believer, it's a very clearly and very well recognizable uh, Orthodox church, uh, Orthodox uh, cross, modern, modern one, not ancient one. And um, the interior was also remodeled. You can see here at the section the chimney. Uh, so the interior was heated. And um, uh, this is some ancient features, the Egyptian cornice, a kind of Egyptian cornice, and the pyramid uh, roof. And um, this is, oh, it works, wow. Um, this is our results of modeling, um, the interior part. You can see that the uh, inhabitants um, of the monastery, they, um, supplied it with uh, the furniture made of uh, the reinforced uh, cement, and uh, it very well resembles the early Byzantine chancel screens. So we think that this um, 
Hellenistic tomb was reused as a chapel. We called it Cross Chapel. Um, and um, the next feature, further to the south, it's the uh, early Roman tomb with the blocked out cornice. Um, and its inner space wasn't finished apparently, but it was reused also as a cell. Here you can see this corbel unfinished and uh, um, the, the table made of the cement inside. And this is the next amazing complex. It resembles very much the previous one. Um, I think, uh, we think that it, uh, it was a um, copy of it um, slightly later. We think that the initial phase might be dated to the early Roman period because the same features we can find here. It's again the f almost freestanding monolith. Uh, the umbilical corridor wasn't carved to the top. So it was an imitation of the freestanding structure, but the composition of the facade, the pyramid roof, and the cornice, everything is here again. Um, uh, so um, it was also connected uh, to the lateral, to the left, another one feature, which was initially a cistern, and it was converted uh, by Russian settlers into the refectory, we think, according to the furniture. It's a very long table. Uh, along the inner perimeter with the seats for six or eight persons at once. And um, um, this one um, feature, mostly amazing, and it was uh, served by Kohavi uh, already, and his thought is still the best because everything now is covered with uh, the trees and plants. And uh, you can see that um, together with the ancient features, there is a sunken cross was carved in the middle and uh, two hallowed uh, figures um, by the sides. And uh, for, again, for every Orthodox believer, it's, it's very clear that it's the composition of the crucifixion, very traditional one. And uh, we suppose that apparently into this sunken uh, fields, uh, an icons were incorporated and fixed. They're not preserved, of course. And uh, we call this um, building uh, a crucifixion chapel. Um, so um, it, this is its current view. And uh, this is some ancient features uh, of it. And um, here is the details are still preserved. Some of them are eroded, but uh, the figures uh, with the hollows and the cross might be still seen. Um, and this is the interior um, of this chapel. There are many tables, seats, and so on. And we think that it might be used uh, as a chapel, but also it might be used at the same time as script scriptorium, or for example, a workshop, um, icon workshop something like, it looks suitable for these purposes. Um, um, so, and the next one feature further to the south, you can see that it's at the southern edge of the fenced area, and it's again, it's uh, the ancient uh, tomb or a cavity with two openings, and we think it was reused as uh, the cell of a gatekeeper who was sitting near the gates, uh, red gates of the monastery. That's, um, some details, and this is the features of the lower terrace. They are mostly amazing. Um, so um, this is uh, the row of um, four features, and uh, it looks like uh, um, uh, they tried to make a symmetry with the openings. You can see that the central opening uh, in the middle, F11, it's flanked by two small windows and also flanked by a pair of openings. Um, and um, this is um, two features to the left. One of them is the Iron Age cave, which was cleared by Russian settlers. And the other one is a strange old zigzag cavity, which is apparently the unfinished uh, corridor or, or the cell, a uh, modern one. This is uh, the feature to the right side. It's a cell also made uh, in the earlier uh, cave. And it was used also as a cell by Russian monks. Uh, we have found some graffitis in Russian at the walls. And uh, this is the central feature. Um, um, we are the first who saw it, and it was amazing uh, because uh, by its uh, characteristics, it's definitely the church. You can see the apse, the pointed semicircular apse at the eastern uh, end. Uh, you can see a kind of a basilical space inside. This one pier wasn't finished, uh, but still it forms a kind of the aisles and the kind of the nave and a very uh, plain dome, uh, which was also apparently unfinished. These two piers, they play the role of iconostasis with the grooves for the royal gates. And, um, and um, this is the section. Here is the church. And um, 
this 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 is the uh, spiral uh, stairway which connected uh, this underground church uh, to to the feature one which I mentioned in the beginning uh, with the old um, uh, corridor with the dead end. Um, so this is the section of these features, and um, this is the interior of the church, which is very plain and unfinished and coarse, but still it's uh, like uh, has an ecclesiastical character. It also contained uh, the graffitis made with the candle. This is the outer space of this church, the staircase, and um, this is how it looks um, at the model. Again, it's very strange, and this corridor is again uh, looks senseless, um, uh, but um, now it will be explained. On the other side, on the western slope of the site, we have uh, it's a it's a more known it's an uh, ancient olive press, again with the corridor, and somehow these two corridors from the uh, western slope and uh, from the eastern slope. Uh, they are coordinated according to their axis and their elevation, <coughs> and uh, they are definitely trying to meet to, be, to meet like Tunnel of Ezekiel in Jerusalem. Uh, but this work were never finished. You can see that here is the axis is general, and we have we, we think that this is that one project of uh, Lazar Sudamoykin, which was never finished because when uh, the World War uh, uh, first started, uh, he together with the other settlers of the Russian monasteries was exiled out of the Ottoman Empire. Uh, so this is the uh, unfinished plan, gorgeous and epic and monumental. It's amazing, and uh, it's uh, something very, actually, uh, usual and general for the Russian culture. We have dozens, if not hundreds, of uh, simple underground churches and monastic complexes, but here at the Holy Land, it's uh, the only one sample of uh, such kind of architecture. This is some sam samples of uh, the churches uh, in Russia and Ukraine, and they are pretty well resembles, uh, resemble that one church in uh, Derzhar. This is the Iron Age cave, which was reused as a cell according to the graffitis on its um, walls. And also we have rediscovered, it's, it's the last point, we have rediscovered uh, the early Byzantine church, which was considered to be lost. We just made an uh, aerial photo and superimposed the um, ancient plan of the church, and amazingly, they coincide, coincided. Uh, the heaps of the stones at the hill, um, they were considered modern because there are plenty of Marcel roof tiles around it, but uh, there is still a Byzantine church under, under the remains. Um, this is the mikwa under the church, which was reused uh, at a certain point as a cistern. And this is another one church which was mentioned by Stileski as uh, the early Byzantine uh, not early Christian catacomb, but it's just an olive press, it, it seems. And uh, the cisterns, uh, which, are, uh, which were built by Lazar Sudamoykin from the stones of Roman road, and uh, this is the remains of the gates. They were looking like this in the beginning of the century. And um, uh, my last words are about uh, Lazar Sudamoykin. Um, after the revolution, um, um, uh, the, the civil war started, and uh, um, he settled in the monastery, Bizikov Monastery. All the settlers of that monastery were killed, but somehow he stayed alive, and he walked by foot to the Holy Land, and he ended his uh, days at the Mount of Olives. He didn't come back to Dershar, um, but uh, he's buried there in the monastery, Russian monastery at the Mount of Olives, under the tombstone which he had inscribed by himself. Uh, thank you for the attention. אנחנו נעשה בסוף, ניתן כמה אפשרות להגיב, פשוט אנחנו לא רוצים לגזול מזמנו של דותן כרגע.